What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the warp stabilizer with an Adobe Premiere Pro. This may be the most exciting part of your day. The warp stabilizer is the stabilization feature within Adobe Premiere Pro. It takes your footage, it moves it around, it crops it down, and it tries to stabilize it as best as possible. It tries to smooth it out so it's a more pleasant viewing experience for your audience or yourself. Facebook friends, I don't know. But within the warp stabilizer, there are a lot of different options that you can choose from, and how are you ever gonna know what all of them mean? There are three different option lists that you can pick from within the warp stabilizer that give you different results in different ways. Some of them are really light and easy for you, your computer to handle. Some of them require extra processing during export. These three options are the result, the method, and the framing. So within the result menu, there are two options. Within the method, there are four options, and within the framing, there are also four options. Multiply all those out and you have 32 separate options for how to stabilize your footage. That can be a little overwhelming. So I'm going to try and break it down for you guys here in the most basic of terms so you guys know what kind of stabilization you need to add to your videos. So I'm shooting this video ultra wide and at 60 frames a second. This should give the program plenty of information and a wide easy to work with frame to try and stabilize all this so it should work very well on this kind of footage. The warp stabilizer also takes quite a bit of horsepower up front as when you apply it it has to analyze all the frames within the shot before it will allow you to adjust any of the settings. Also this is being shot on the Sony 10-18 to optical steady shot lens so it does have built-in stabilization but that only works so well. And this is being shot wide open at 10 millimeters. So with all that said let's get into it. The first thing is the result. You've got smooth motion and no motion. First of all, with the smooth motion, it'll take your footage, move it around slightly to give you a good stabilization, but it will retain more of the image because it will move the framing around to try and try and hang on to as much of the image as you've got. With the no motion option, all right, so I'm back out here re-recording this for the no movement selection. After playing with it a little bit, I noticed that I had too much movement within the shot I recorded and it wasn't going to work. So what the no motion does is it tries to keep the entire frame completely free of any motion at all. And because of that, it will move the image all over the place trying to keep everything within the shot exactly where it is in the frame that you're watching it in. It will move around my footage to try and keep it all still within the YouTube frame that you're watching it in right now. So this results in massive movements with the initial footage and if it tries to crop this it'll just flat out say you can't crop it that much. So I'm sure this stabilization method has got a time and place for it to be used but I can't imagine it would be every day because there's going to be too much movement within day-to-day -day shots to be able to use this in. So those are the two options you have within result. That's a separate category that can be applied to any of the underlying options. So next, kind of gonna be the elephant in the room for this next little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about it. It is the framing or the borders. The first of the borders is stabilize only, which will leave the outside edges of your video floating around, giving you a moving black border throughout your video. This is very distracting, hard to watch, and it's kind of confusing when you're watching, you're trying to figure out what's happening to the edges of your video. So that's why they have added stabilize and crop. This takes that movable black border that's floating around your video, and it crops your video down to where you can't see it moving anymore. The downfall to this is that you have then got a cropped image. Your video will look smaller because it's been cropped. It was stabilized and then it was cropped. So what do you do about that? Well, they've done it for you. There's a stabilize, crop, and auto scale option. This stabilizes your video, crops it down, and then scales it back up to fill a frame. The downside of this, however, is that if you shoot in 1080p, do heavy stabilization, and crop it, then auto scale it back up, you may have a very low resolution image after the fact. This will be less noticeable at 4K, but it's definitely something you wanna keep in mind. Now the final option underneath borders that you can pick is to synthesize the edges. Basically what it's going to do, it's going to stabilize your video 
only where you had all the crazy black borders floating around and within that black area that you see it's going to try and predict and figure out what would have been there based on previous and future frames of the video this can be very unpredictable and you don't know what you're going to get because it's adding information that's not there into the video you can't preview this either because it requires heavy processing and this will be applied during the export so you don't know what you'll get until you've got it and then if you don't like it you're going to have to go back re-export the whole video you may just want to export clip by clip with different kinds of stabilization to see what works best for you in those different situations so now that we've taken care of the borders and the options therein we will now go to the method that it uses to stabilize the video. The first one is the position. This is very straightforward, very basic. It takes your video and moves it around to offset the camera movements. It moves it only in two directions, the x-axis and the y-axis, in order to offset the camera movement. This is a very basic way of stabilization. It should be fairly light to do for your computer uh, should be easy on the export. You can preview it on the timeline and it does an alright job. The next option is position, scale, and rotation. This method not only takes into consideration the two-dimensional camera movements, but also the forward and backwards camera movements of the scale. Not only does it do those two, but it also does the rotation. So you can really have a shaky camera and it will try and offset all of those movements on the position, the scale and the rotation. The next one is perspective. This will do the position, the scale, the rotation, as well as try and skew the image to where it thinks everything should stay while the camera's moving around. Now for the final method is subspace warp, which sounds like some kind of hyperdrive in Star Wars or something. And this is the most advanced stabilization method that's within Premiere Pro. This will take the position, the scale, the rotation, and the perspective. It'll do all that, and it will also warp individual areas of the image to try and stabilize bits and pieces of the framing. This can get really crazy looking and really warpy really fast. And also with these different methods, if it can't find enough reference points to do one of them, it'll default back to the previous one. If it doesn't have enough information in the frame to do position, scale, and rotation, it'll default back to just position. So that is, in a nutshell, Adobe's Warp Stabilizer. Hopefully it has been demonstrated well enough here that you know what to use on your next video editing project. And I think that as my arms have been fatiguing, as I've been holding this camera out in front of me, there's been a better and better example for this stabilization to take effect. So, if you liked this video, give me a like. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you in the next one.